Hey guys, so this is the wonderful Phalaenopsis Gigobel. It is a primary hybrid between Phalaenopsis gigantea and Phalaenopsis bellina. And what do you know? I have both of them. So it's really fun to see what traits this orchid got from a what orchid. And I'll do my best to show them on the screen as well. Now Phalaenopsis Gigobel is a big orchid, just like her parent Phalaenopsis gigantea, which I know that mine does not look very big, but trust me, at full maturity, which will happen in a few years, it will have about one meter long leaves. I will be honest with you, I don't really know if the hybrid can reach that potential and I do not see pictures on the internet, but judging by how it grows and how it looks like, I would not be surprised if the Gigabell will be a very big orchid as well. In contrast, the Bellina has a more manageable size. And when I say manageable, I mean more comfortable for us home growers. As you can see, the Bellina has much glossier leaves. They have a different hue to them. They're more light green. And I do believe the Gigabell got a lot of heritage when it comes to the leaves from the Gigantia, which I personally really love. The Gigantia has this sheen that we see on the Gigabell as well. And also this bluish muted coloration of the leaves, which by the way, it is absolutely normal. I know it's not glossy and light green, but it's not supposed to be although new leaves that form tend to be a lot glossier than the older ones. It appears this glaucous sheen appears after the leaf fully matures. Care-wise, it takes the absolute same care as the Bellina and the Gigantia. Both of these orchids are polykylous type Phalaenopsis. They tend to bloom throughout the summer and the warmer season generally, and they don't produce as many flowers as we're accustomed to with the flower shop Phalaenopsis. For more details on these types of Phalaenopsis, just check the description. I have a full polykylous video for you if you're interested. So with the Gigabell, I assure you, you will not have issues reblooming if you live in a very warm area, which doesn't have that cool down in winter. In tropical regions, I think you will do great with it and it will bloom on and off throughout the year for you. Speaking of the blooms, they are fantastic, aren't they? And I do believe they resemble the Gigantia a little bit more when it comes to the pattern. But the shape and even how the pattern is displayed on the flower looks a little bit like the Bellina. I do think this is a perfect combination between those two orchids. If I would combine them, this is how they would look like. Fragrance-wise, again, I find it a sort of combination. The Bellina has the most beautiful fragrance of all Polykylus Phalaenopsis. In my opinion, and not only, I think many of you will agree, while the Gigantia has a very unique maybe citrusy, maybe a little bit more raspier fragrance, if I can put it like that. Well, this orchid is a combination of both of those. Fruity, raspy, not as good as the Bellina, but very interesting, very noticeable and beautiful again. I expect it is a sequential bloomer since both of its parents are. This means that on the same flower spike, you can have multiple inflorescences. Once some of the flowers fade, new buds can be formed at any time. So if the flower spike is green and the orchid is healthy, it's not dehydrated or it's not rootless, then let the flower spike be. It will continuously produce buds. And don't worry about over blooming. These types of orchids, which are closer to their species, do not overbloom generally. Only the flower shop Phalaenopsis, which are hybrids and have been manipulated by people to kind of overbloom pretty much, they're in danger of depleting themselves. These guys, not so much. They kind of know what they're doing since they're closer to their natural selves. And as I'm sitting here talking about it, I'm starting to detect the fragrance. It is lovely. So if you have a little bit of space in your home and you generally do great with any type of Phalaenopsis, I see no reason why you would not do great with this orchid. I would consider getting a razor or putting it on a upper shelf because the leaves will get longer and they will start to touch the shelf. And if it's one thing this orchid together with the Gigantia is prone to, is having that damage at the end of the leaves, which I will talk about on my main channel in a different video. This one and the Gigantia, they're both prone to having that damage and those split leaves. I think it's a genetic thing. And the less it touches surfaces, the better. And another thing, I would be careful how I dust this orchid. I would not rub the leaves because you will remove that sheen. It's not going to harm anything. 
In our homes, that sheen doesn't really have much of a role since we don't shower orchids, but it will look patchy and not nice. So if you can shower your orchid safely to dust it, that is great. I would not scrub the leaves pretty much. Also expect a ton of roots. The Gigantia and this one as well in particular, I see they're much more root producers than other Phalaenopsis. So I suggest that you do not go for a tiny pot or a conventional pot with the Giga Bell. Maybe from the get-go consider a slightly larger one and make sure that you make that medium fluffy. It is an epiphytic orchid, does not like to be suffocated quite at all, but I assure you, you will be impressed by the amount of roots and how fast it produces them. So you will have to water more and more and more frequent until maybe you will not have time to water. A good setup for Polychylus phalaenopsis generally, not only this one, is with sphagnum moss. If you live in a dry area, plastic pots, sphagnum moss will be your best friend. If you live in maybe slightly cooler, more humid area, maybe unglazed clay pots together with sphagnum moss will be your best friend with this orchid. And with that said, that is about it. I can ramble a little about this orchid because I really like it and I think it's wonderful. So I hope this video was useful if you ever see it for sale at a decent price. I think it's totally worth getting, just remember it will grow up to be big. Usually they sell it at a young age, it's tiny, it's cute, it maybe looks like a mini phalaenopsis, oh no it's not gonna stay small, it will probably be big. So keep that in mind. But other than that it's a joy to grow, very very easy in any home, no need for humidifier or anything like that. Phalaenopsis don't need that. So whatever conditions you have in your home, if they are bright shade and warm, they will like it. So all right, it's time to end. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.